Welcome to the Scoop School Podcast, where we tackle your conundrums about the retail ice cream and frozen dessert business. And now, here's your host. He's so ice cream, he called his kids Ben and Jerry. And they're girls. The ice cream bloke and self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School, Steve Christensen. G'day, ice cream lovers. Thanks for joining us at the podcast. Great to see you. We're going to talk a little bit about alcohol and ice cream today. Before we jump into that, though, I do want to thank our episode sponsor, which is the Wadden Systems, or better known as the 24 Flavor System. Now, the 24 Flavor System is a, a system whereby you can flavor and put particulates in either custard or soft serve type products that you typically couldn't do before. It's a great little system, it's relatively inexpensive for the value that it gives you and it gives you the opportunity as I said to be able to offer a combination of a thousand, more than a thousand different flavors to your ice cream or frozen custard. Again typically products that you're extracting straight out of the machine and you don't have a lot of options so far as flavors and colors are concerned. Go and see 24flavors.com. Hugh Kane and the boys will treat you well. 24flavors.com. Thank you, Hugh, for your sponsorship. Now, this is mid, uh, a little bit past mid-2017. And for the past 12 to 18 months, there has been a real push in the industry for alcohol ice cream. Uh, Alcohol-infused ice cream, uh, alcohol-flavored ice cream. And a couple of things that you need to consider before you jump into this alcohol ice cream product. The first of which is, does your city, state or county allow you to put alcohol in ice cream out and what are the requirements? So rather than you just being the ice cream store down the road, start adding alcohol to ice cream, make sure that you talk to your legislative authority to find out whether you're actually allowed to do so. It's really important that you do that. Now you might want to justify it and say, well, I'm going to cook the majority of the alcohol out of the ice cream anyway. I still think that you might have to speak to them. Now, the ATF or the Alcohol Tobacco Firearms people, again, that might, uh, your local state, county, might refer to the ATF for guidelines. So be prepared for a bit of a question and answer process. I think it's important for you to find out exactly what the legal requirements are for you to put ice cream, uh, alcohol in your ice cream. The second is the perception that your customers are going to have if you start putting alcohol infused ice cream or even alcohol flavored ice cream in your display case or your dipping case. Now we've always had our ice cream shops in family based demographics. We want the mum and the two and a half kids coming in having an ice cream or a treat after school, uh, Saturday afternoon after working in the yard or playing football, come down to the ice cream shop. My perception is that if I start offering alcohol flavored ice creams I'm kind of putting a barrier between that mum and my product line. She doesn't want to necessarily uh, have her children ask, what's whiskey flavored ice cream? Or what's this uh, port wine flavored sorbet? Can I have some of that? And so I think you need to pick your market as to what works and what doesn't. Even if the government says you can do it, it might not be such a good idea because it might turn some of your customer base away. The perception is, you know, that, ah, do I really want to have my kids here ordering vanilla and cookies and cream when someone's next to them ordering up a pretty hard whiskey uh, sorbet or whatever. So that's a second thing to keep in mind. And the third is that in the process of adding alcohol to ice cream, as I mentioned earlier, you're more than likely going to boil or reduce a lot of the water and the alcohol out of that product. So for example, as a general rule of thumb, if you were taking a six pack of Guinness to make a Guinness ice cream, you would put that on a stove top and basically boil it down or reduce it by half. You're getting rid of the excess liquid, you're getting rid of a lot of the alcohol, and you're making a concentrate so that you're not adding a lot of extra water to dissipate the fat product or the fat content of your ice cream. So make sure that you get into the process of experimenting with it as well. Now, because I don't drink alcohol, I'm probably not the best person to give you a lot of advice on taste profiles and so forth, but I certainly can teach you the logistics of it. So again, three points. First of which, make sure you're legal. Second of which, make sure that your demographic or the perception of your customer isn't tainted by offering alcohol ice creams. And third, experiment with that uh, reducing or making a concentrate of that alcohol base so that you're not overly waterfying or thinning out the uh, cream content of your ice cream products. 
Uh, again, it's a growing trend. I think you're, you're going to see, I don't think it's a fad. I think you're going to see a lot of it slowly going up where stores are offering, particularly in certain parts of stores where, or towns where there's double income, no kids, and that kind of demographic. I think you're going to see a lot more of it. A couple of points to consider. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next episode.